This is Chapter 8 in Radomsky, Assessing Abilities and Capacities, Motor Planning and Motor Performance. There's two approaches when it comes to motor planning and motor performance. We have the system-based task-related approaches and the neurophysiological approaches. A table with a comparison between the two can be found here. We'll start by taking a look at the neurophysiological approaches. Some assumptions of the neurophysiological approaches are the reflex hierarchical model of motor control, which follows um, both closed looped and open loop function that is depicted in the table here. So first, you start with the motivation to move, and then long-term memory is searched, program is devel um, developed and forwarded for execution, program is executed, monitored, and adapted, and knowledge of the results is received, correlated with other sensory information, and the program is stored in the memory for future use. The neuromaturational theory of motor development and is next. This theory suggests that changes in motor development are due to maturation of the ner nervous system and changes in neural structure caused by changes in motor function. It implies that the environment plays minimal role in motor development and current, current research actually suggests the opposite of this theory, but it's one that we have. Motor dysfunction caused by central nervous system lesions is the next approach. So this assumption is specific in areas of brain um, function. Therefore, if a given area of the brain is damaged, that, that associated function is expected to be impaired. M motor dysfunction following CNS damage is best understood by knowing the site and extent of the lesions. And then we move on to our view of recovery after central nervous system lesions. The recovery after central nervous system lesions is due to changes in the CNS. This recovery is believed to follow a developmental sequence from reflex to voluntary control and from mass movements to discrete movements and flow proximal to distal. An example of this is the Brun Brunstrom stages. Um, the first one is flaccidity. The second is basic components of synergies with some spasticity. Third, some voluntary control of synergies with some spasticity. Fourth, movement out of synergies and decreased spasticity. And five, the synergies no longer have any dominance over motor, motor accent and there's increased and in coordinated movement. And six, movement coordinated approach, approach is normal. Some evaluations used by the neurophysiological approach. Um, the main one is to assess muscle tone, and muscle tone is defined as the resistance of a muscle to passive elongation or stretching. Slight resistance characterizes normal muscle tone. Hypotonia is less than normal resistance to passive elongation, and hypertonia is more than normal resistance of a muscle to passive elongation. The uh, Gold standard evaluation for this is the modified Ashworth scale, which grades the spasticity um, from zero to one, uh, sorry, zero to four, and you can see all the individual rankings here. And then we have the psychrometric properties of this assessment listed in table 8.1. Moving on to the systems-based task-related approaches, So there's much more on this side of the concept map. We have system model of motor control, system model of motor behavior, view of recovery after central nervous system dysfunction, and evaluation using this approach. So using the system model of motor control. This in emphasizes the interaction between persons and environments and suggests that motor behavior emerges from persons multiple system interacting with unique and environmental contexts. We have um, two branches from this model, the ecological approach and the dynamic systems theory. Uh, to sum up the ecological approach, um, it emphasizes a study of interactions between the person and the environment their everyday functional tasks and the close linkage between perception and action, meaning purposeful movement. Um, postures and movements are not triggered by external stimulation or central commands, but are coordinated structures capable of adapting and changing to circumstances. The dynamic systems theory 
originated in the study of mathematics, physics, biology, chemistry, psychology, and kinesiology. And it proposes that behaviors emerge from the interaction of many systems, and because this behavior is emergent, it is considered to be self-directed. So this beha behavior can change from stable to less stable as a result of CNS damage. And dynamic systems theory holds that it's during the unstable periods that new behaviors emerge, either gradually or abruptly. And these trans transitions in behavior, known as phase shifts, are changes from one preferred pattern of coordinated behavior to another. The system model of motor behavior is um, ability to accomplish occupational tasks in ADLs, work or play and leisure emerges from interaction between the person and environment. And the occupational performance task affects the environment in which occurs um, and the person is acting. So, and then the view of recovery after CNS dysfunction within this is that uh, providing appropriately challenged tasks and environments for those with CNS dysfunction, both in the hospital and at home, is, very, is critical to maximal rehabilitation. So moving on down to some of the assessments of motor behavior and motor function, uh, we have several over here. And I won't go into detail on everything, but the motor assessment scale, the arm mobility test, or AMAT, the wolf function test, the motor activity log, and the Fugelmeyer assessment. And then for assessment of balance, we have the Berg balance scale and the functional reach test. And then there's a gait assessment, which within occupational therapy, we make sure we assess gait in the um, context of person, you know, moving from meal prep in the kitchen to uh, ADL routine or toileting or shower or bathing. Like how do they move back and forth between these, their functional mobility? And then we have reach and manipulation and then assessment of praxis. And there's different types of praxis. There's limb apraxia, constructional apraxia, and dressing apraxia. And there is a chart over here um, discussing these. And then assessment of motor neglect. And motor neglect presents as an impaired initiation or execution of movement in the contralateral hemispace by either limb. And Definitions 8.4 down here go into a little bit more detail. And this chart over here shows the evaluation framework for systems-based related tasks.